you just mentioned a very important thing, and we did just remove our mask for this because we are in the middle of a pandemic still. Uh, talk about the importance of going and getting your cleanings and keeping your hygiene up during the pandemic because of your immune system. How we try stressing that to our patients. So, yeah, why don't you comment on that? Yeah, and especially for our periodontal patients, like we talked about earlier, needing needing frequent maintenance. Um, you know, there's scientific reasons why that three month recall is recommended for those patients. Um, any patient who has a history of gum disease, um, or any patient who just is typically coming in for six month cleanings to prevent gum disease, um, that's that's going to set you up to be able to you know really manage your condition and prevent things from getting worse. Um, in this crazy time of COVID, um, we see so many patients now that by just by skipping one interval, um, you, the amount of inflammation that we're seeing and the amount of um, uncontrolled disease in other parts of their body um, is really becoming a, a huge factor. I think something else that we didn't mention, very important, is just stress levels, right? So stress levels increase you know, the amount of cortisol, the amount of these inflammatory proteins. And again, think of that immune system as that seesaw. So we, we really want to make sure that patients understand that we're here for them. You know, getting your cleanings is going to be the most predictable and, and the easiest way to catch these problems before they become more severe. Um, and that's why, you know, coming in, despite the fact that, you know, we're all nervous, we're all wearing masks um, all day long. And I think what we've really found in the last six months that we've been, you know, back to work is that we're pretty safe in this office, right? We're all wearing masks sure, and exactly. I, I don't go anywhere else that I feel is safe is when I'm actually at work because I know everybody is following the protocols. Yeah, and, and uh, just it's worth repeating to everybody out there, uh, there has yet to be a, a reported case of transmission in a dental office from a team member to a patient or a patient to a team member because the only time we have our masks off is basically to film this YouTube video uh, in the office right now. I mean, we're constantly sanitizing, wearing masks, wearing gloves, and we've been doing this for decades and maybe a hundred years in dentistry. So it's very, very important that people understand that and you're putting yourself at a much greater risk. I'm sure you would agree, Dr. Fine, a much greater risk by not coming in and then coming into the dental office. So I think that's worth stressing to the patients. Uh, you know, the internet, we all love the internet, okay? We can't live without the internet, but the internet's full of a lot of uh, interesting information that gets people's attention. And one of the big things out there is treating your gum disease on your own, treating it naturally, you want to share some of your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm sure I know what you're going to say, but I, I want your opinion. Listen, I, I mean, I'm all for doing your own research, but you know, unfortunately, um, we all know a lot of the things that we may come across are, are sort of too good to be true. So, um, it, I stress, you know, to all of our patients that. In, in order to really treat gum disease, you need to have a professional to treat your gum disease. Um, if we're ignoring gum disease, it gets worse. And so rather than relying on this information that clearly you know, isn't founded in much science, um, you know, doesn't mean that we need to do any major procedures. Sometimes this, the solution is just a, deep, a good cleaning, like you talked about, a good deep cleaning. And so what I found that, you know, in the years that I've worked and in the patients that I've seen and I've followed for the last 10 to 15 years, um, you know, the patients that disappear because they decide they're going to do some oil pulling or they're going to, um, you know, take a daily aspirin or some other, you know, basically um, left field type of uh, treatment, you know, end up coming back in, in five, ten years later and then we decide, you know, now we have to start losing teeth because Paradigm disease that could have been treated, you know, was ignored. Well, I, uh, I think it's easily, I think it's easily summed up in the fact that if you say like any other illness, early, early detection early is the detection. most important thing. Sure. I mean, I will tell you, one of the most bizarre ones I've heard in my life was I had a patient that uh, used to go swimming in the ocean every day, and for years he just would rinse his mouth with the salt water, and he was under the belief that that was the best hygiene for him. So. There's, and that's pre-internet, so um, it shows you the, the level of what people can believe when they get the wrong thing. So, um, how about hydrogen peroxide? What's, how do you feel about that and its role in terms of periodontics? You know, hydrogen peroxide is an interesting, you know, choice. Um, we actually will use hydrogen peroxide in a lot of in a lot of treatments. Um, I think it's a great way to change the oxygen tension in the mouth. And what, the reason why that's important is because different bacteria, you know, thrive on different amounts of oxygen. And so oxygen, oxy, uh, hydrogen peroxide 
is going to make the bacteria in your mouth that don't like oxygen, that eat the bone, a little bit less dangerous. But it's in no way a cure for gum disease. So we'll often prescribe patients to use hydrogen peroxide after treatment. Um, but the reality is it's not really very effective unless you actually will clean the teeth the proper way. So hydrogen peroxide alone could be a problem. It's, there's a lot of belief that it masks the gum disease because it, it hides some of the bleeding but doesn't cure the gum disease. Is that so? Actually, I think that's a, a really cool way to think about it, you know? Um, and it, it, it makes sense because if you're using hydrogen peroxide, you're kind of cleaning things on the surface, but you're, like I said, you're not getting rid of the bacteria that's really deep down. And that obviously is going to mean that you're going to continue to suffer from gum disease. It's going to get worse, but you're going to be under the impression that things are, you know, fine. Okay. So these will make quick questions for you because um, there's information that people need to know how serious and, and contagious things are with gum disease. We'll move on to other subjects. So if it gets bad enough, can you actually die from periodontal disease? Yes or no? Uh, you know, it's kind of scary, but the unfortunate answer is, you know, we've heard people dying of sepsis and bacteremia, so, um, you know, this is a, a tremendous amount of bacteria that's built up in your mouth, and think of it like a little ecosystem that this bacteria kind of creates under the gums. Um, and certainly, um, there's a, a lot of science, and we know that's why a lot of our patients that do have heart disease or certain heart conditions take antibiotics before their dental, you know, procedures. And so I think it's very important that people realize this is a systemic condition. It's not just something that involves your mouth. Um, it's a sign that, you know, we need to get your body healthy. And the best way to do that is by getting a good cleaning, getting rid of the bacteria. And good home care. And then following it up with good home care. I'm sure. Okay. Can you pass gum disease around kissing somebody? I mean, I think the simple answer is yes, you probably can. Um, it's interesting because we could all have the same bacteria in our mouth, but some of us are going to suffer from gum disease more than others. Why? Well, we talked about it. Genetics, right? We talked about genetics playing a, a role in about 50% of gum disease. Um, but sure, the type of bacteria that we have in our mouth um, travels just like the bacteria for, for all the other diseases. Okay. Another quickie. Can you get gum disease if you have, if you're wearing dentures and have no teeth? You know, there's a lot of other conditions that we will basically, you know, call under the, the heading of gum disease or, or periodontal disease. Um, without teeth, you technically can't get gum disease, but obviously wearing dentures causes a whole host of other issues. Um, tissue can tend to be kind of tender. Um, a lot of patients that wear dentures may even show up in the office with fungal infections, not related to, the, to teeth because the teeth are missing but just related to the fact that they're having to wear some sort of appliance in their mouth. So there's soft tissue issues people can get. They can't really get gum disease if you don't have teeth. How's that? That's a good way of saying it. Okay. okay. So um, crowns, veneers, people have all kinds of dental work in their mouth. Are they more susceptible to having problems because they have this extra hardware in their mouths? Well, it's not necessarily true that they're more susceptible to gum disease. Um, but certainly, you know, patients that have crowns and bridges, it's super important that we, we do frequent cleanings and frequent follow-ups because, um, you know, bacteria like to attach to things, you know, like, like to attach to different margins. And certainly, um, you know, having material in the mouth that's, you know, not got given is, is going to make you more prone to developing plaque and, and things that can lead to gum disease. Got it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other things you do because I know, um, you know, you do a tremendous amount of procedures in our office. One of the things I know you do a lot of is placement of implants. Um, let's talk about the difference between a oral surgeon or a periodontist putting in. What are some of the reasons somebody might go, you know, sometimes I have to have an implant put in. I'd rather have a periodontist do it. Why would you say, is there a difference? Uh, you know, it really depends on the training of the doctor. Um, you know, in my training as a periodontist, uh, we were very heavily focused on learning how to place implants. Um, but not just the placement of the implant, but the actual um, whole process from start to finish of restoring a patient's mouth with teeth. And that involves a lot of the time um, modifying the gums, modifying the soft tissue, so that the actual restoration on the implant looks like a natural tooth.